we want this to be just touch in there. Right. And this one just, I can use your help, I guess. Hold on, I gotta get up. You need a hand? Yeah! Look! Hello, Snack Pack. Welcome back to Travel Snacks. Today's episode is all about keeping your food cold in a refrigerator in your van. Now this is a very important topic because you're gonna wanna have snacks while you're on the road. There's a lot to talk about. Plus I'm gonna show you some of my favorite foods and snacks at the end of the video. So let's jump right in. We are not professionals. If you follow any of the things we do in this video, it's at your own risk. When I was living in my car, I really didn't have a way to keep food cold or if I had any leftovers, there wasn't a place to store those things. I did try out a little cheap mini cooler, but the ice kept melting so fast that it really wasn't worth it and it was kind of a mess. Then I tried to upgrade to a bigger cooler, which was really great. And I made a video on that if you wanna watch that. The ice lasted, but I still didn't wanna mess with ice because it just, it's such a hassle and that ice can really add up even if it's just a dollar, a dollar tree. Then I tried to use a portable refrigerator in my car, but if you watch that video, you'll see that that just didn't work out. So now that I have a van, I knew that I really wanted to have a good solid refrigerator where I can store leftovers, frozen items, and all of my snacks. Now, if you're doing a van conversion of your own, you're gonna have to make a decision if number one, you're gonna wanna have a refrigerator, and number two, if you do, what type you're gonna want. Really, it comes down to two different kinds. The first one is a 12 volt refrigerator, something like a Dometic. Those are kind of a rectangle. They kind of sit on the floor or you can build up a little stand for it. And the top lid lifts up like an ice chest. Now, a lot of these are really nice and some of them even have a refrigerator and freezer separate so you can have two different compartments. But I didn't really want to be lifting up and shuffling through all my food and stuff like that. So I didn't really want to go down that road. Plus those Dometic refrigerators can be pretty pricey. I really had this vision where I wanted to have a small little dorm fridge and I wanted it to be elevated higher off the ground. So the ones that I've seen in other van builds, they are all even with the countertops, which is nice, it's fine, but I really didn't wanna be crouching down, opening the fridge. So I had this in my mind that I wanted to build it up higher and have my toilet underneath, which sounds kind of gross because you're gonna be basically using the bathroom in your kitchen. That's van life. Once I decided that I wanted a mini fridge, I went on Amazon to look at all the different options. And one of the things that I really wanted was to have two separate compartments, fridge part and a freezer part. A lot of the mini fridges, if you notice them, the ones that have one door, the freezer part is like this big and you might get like a little ice section. And I'm like, no nah, bro, I have like so many frozen things. I gotta have all the frozen things. And plus I'm gonna start cooking in my van and I really wanna be able to cook things like soups and stews and then freeze the leftovers in little baggies. Plus for the convenience, sometimes I like to eat frozen meals. So I really wanted to have a separate section for my freezer area. The one that stood out to me was the Midia or Medea mini fridge. And one thing I really liked about it was that it was Energy Star efficient or Energy Star rated. I don't know the exact stuff because Energy Star appliances have to go through some certification process that really makes it cost effective and uses less energy. And when you're in a van, you need to use as little energy as possible. This refrigerator is 80 watts and one amp which I don't really know how to calculate all that stuff yet, which I think I'm gonna have to learn because I'm about to be living in this van full time. A lot of the mini fridges were a lot less expensive, under $100, but this one was $229. $229 for a little mini fridge? Oh, heck no, but the price kept going up. I ordered it and the very next day, it went from $229 to $450. $450 for a little mini fridge? This fridge either is popular or people have just lost their minds. So anyways, I got the fridge and I held on to the fridge for a long time. Now we're at the point where we can install the fridge. I love how this fridge keeps everything nice and cool. You know what else is cool? Hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell. And you might as well throw a like on it. Even though we're really far ahead of this particular stage in the van build, we need the cardboard so we can use it as a template to create some stuff for the roof. This is the Midia 3.1 cubic feet refrigerator freezer. Okay, so we built the cabinet for the refrigerator toilet combination thing and then we realized we had a lot of extra space in the back 
So now we're kind of destroying part of it and we're gonna build it a different way. Building the walls that's gonna contain this refrigerator. Now, I know some of you are going to be like, that fridge is way too big. You could have put a shower in that space. This is the snack mobile. I don't want to have to keep going back and forth to the store all the time. I just want to have a space for all my food. So we've used one of these ratchet straps to connect the refrigerator to the base. Then we're going to bolt down this base. Put some foam insulation half inch on the outside just to give it a little more coldness -ness. I put some more pants off of. That's it's not going nowhere. Not going anywhere. So you want this to be just touch in there. Right. And this one just I can use your help I guess. Hold on I gotta get up. Need a hand? Yeah! Whoa! Adding supports to the top of the fridge. Does this bend it? Can we bend it? In? No. Not at all. Unless you put it in a furnace. Ha! I was thinking about using that up here. That wood's gonna be plenty strong, trust me. I'm afraid of it going forward. There's, there's, I'm gonna have a lot of, I mean, one fun. piece of wood. Yeah. Is gonna hold this in place. Yes. You're gonna put, the same thing, if I glue on the bottom of that, it's just the glue holding it. It's not a matter of the wood or the... Yeah, but this would be screwed into the metal. You see? Screw this into this metal right here, and then glue this on like... That's a good idea. thing that I really wanted to do separately was I saw a blog post. It was talking about installing some sort of a relay onto the refrigerator, connecting it somehow to your inverter so that the refrigerator only kicks the inverter on when it cycles through because like I'm not technical here. Just just bear with me. The power's on, gets to temperature, and then it kind of just idles down. But it doesn't just like stay like blasting like a microwave. That kind of doesn't make sense either. Once it reaches like a certain temperature, it's pretty much going to stay there. And so the energy pull goes down a little bit. So there was this article that talked about installing some sort of a relay so that the inverter only kicks on when it has to build back up to the temperature. But when I went back to look for that blog post, the website was down. I'm not really sure if that's something that I can do at a later date because everything's already wired up. If not, I'll just have to deal with it. If anybody knows how to do that, drop it in the comments or send me a DM on Instagram. It'd still be nice to know and then I can share it with the snack pack. Okay, just as a quick test, I threw a few things into the refrigerator. It's not fully stocked, but just to give you an idea of what this refrigerator capacity can hold, let's take a look at some of my favorite things. Okay, this isn't the pizza that I eat, but this is the one that was in the fridge that my parents like. But I wanted to just make sure that a frozen pizza could fit in here. And it does. My favorite is the DiGiorno Thin Crust Margarita Pizza. But this is just for demonstration purposes. If anyone knows how to cook a frozen pizza in a van, let me know. Now, you know I have to have my frozen Reese's Cups. And if you're not freezing your Reese's Cups, you're doing it wrong. Try it out. You're going to love it. Put some frozen vegetables or something in the side pocket here. I do like this fridge, but I don't really like the way that they laid out this side door because it could have maximized a lot better. Right now, there's a little section up here for like butter or a little thing of cheese or whatever. But this little section right here is only gonna hold my cream and my little ketchup, which I gotta have ketchup. But this right here, I think that they think that most people drink sodas. And I feel like it would have been better if I could have had like mayonnaise, relish, mustard, salsa, pickles, soy sauce, and so many other things. I don't really drink soda. So this, I don't know, I'm going to maybe modify this, but maybe that'll be a project I do on the road. So it does have a little vegetable crisper drawer. Got my avocado because you got to have that. It has glass shelves. 
I love these. Udon noodles, legit, they're so good. Like ramen, but thicker. And this is the best coffee ever. Seattle's best breakfast blend. It's gotta be breakfast blend. It's so smooth and delightful. I don't know if you're supposed to keep coffee in the fridge, but I do. Okay, so here's my gripe with the way that this is set up. I don't think this vegetable crisper is doing any crisping for reals. If I have any tall items, cause they're not gonna fit in the side door, you can't really rest them on the shelf because there's only like a couple inches of a lip. So it's gonna tip over. So I think if I take this out, or actually I could just put this back here, this will fit much better and I can fit more things into the side door. It's all gonna be an experiment. Even though there's a nice lip to open the door, you don't want to have the doors flying open when you're driving. So I purchased these refrigerator locks on Amazon. I bought two, one for the fridge, one for the freezer. They were like 10 bucks each, bro. What is up with stuff costing so much? But they're child locks. It looks like this, and it has these two little things that you pull, and it just separates. So it locks into place. This just tapes on to the outside of this and onto this. And that's it. So when you want to get something out, you just, so it's not, it's not connected, so it's going to be hard to do, but you just pull onto these two things and this stays in place and this comes out. Ah! You get the point. There's so many things that I want to put into this refrigerator, but I know I'm limited by space. What are the things that you would have to have in your refrigerator? Leave it in the comments below. I'd like to know because I love talking about food and hearing about food.